For centuries, maps have shown us how to get from point A to point B, but they're much more than that. They're a record of what people care about. But how do you preserve those stories when maps are no longer on paper? From compass and quill to satellites and laser beams, the tools of the trade for map makers evolve over time, but the goal is the same, guiding us safely to our destination. I've never met someone that says, oh, I don't like maps. They're also a time capsule of stories to help our descendants. But there always has these political choices that go into it about what is and is not on the map. Sometimes those stories are mysteries, revealing mountains or rivers that don't exist. Whaling ships in the Eastern Coral Sea record Sandy Island, which is shown on maps for a hundred years. But in 2012, it's declared a phantom island. It does not exist. As navigation evolves from parchment to digital, how will our story change? And what will be the map mysteries for the next generation as they try to navigate time and space? So I'm centering it on that reflective glass now. Don Smith peers through the lens as he did several decades ago as a boy, the fifth generation of the Smith family mapping Chicago since 1854. I was uh, nine years old and my father brought me to the whole of the Prudential building and I stood on the box and looked through the instrument. And ever since then, I was in my blood. This was a, a railroad level, probably 1830s. He shows the evolution of technology. Instead of lasers or computers, they first use chains to measure distance. The chain was the measurement. And so you measure. Almost like a first down marker in football. <laughs> yeah, similar. Yeah. One of Don's ancestors consults with a lawyer named Abraham Lincoln, who represents a railroad in a property dispute, a case he ultimately wins. The family business, Greeley, Howard, Norlin, and Smith, helps build the Sears Tower. Ravinia, the Chicago sewer system. A lot of it is art, a lot of it is talent, a lot of it is knowledge, because we need to know so many different vocabularies. Archaeology, geometry, law. This is of Cook County. It's a complex blend of art and science. Far northwest suburb of Chicago. Map of Elmhurst, Belvedere, Oak Park, Elmwood Park. Don and his wife Tanya have an archive of 500,000 drawings. This is the earliest survey of Chicago area. I don't know the actual date of it. It only shows part of Lake Michigan and part of Chicago River. Wow. Every week we find some maps that we unroll and both of us say, wow, like wow, did not expect to find that. It's what keeps us going. But as retirement is near and his children are not interested in cartography, the question now is what to do with this historic treasure? Well, some might say they're outdated. Do they still tell a story after all these years? Absolutely. You can follow growth patterns of the city. This map was made of what used to be a German neighborhood. As the decades pass, the lines may be the same, but the culture of the neighborhood changes as people move on. We're always on the move, which is why maps may be the most important invention ever. There's no artifact that's confirmed to be the oldest map because sometimes it's not always clear whether it's a map at all like the engraving on this 27,000-year-old mammoth tusk. This clay map is 3,400 years old and depicts an ancient city in what is now Iraq. In the second century, Ptolemy uses astronomy and math to map the world. So this is actually two maps in one. David Weimer is the curator of maps at the Newberry Library. In ancient times, they had to use celestial events. A way that you could know you're experiencing the same thing at the same time was if you're seeing something in the sky. Ptolemy underestimates the size of the world, which is why Columbus thinks he lands in China instead of the Bahamas. Some scholars note earlier explorers referred to the New World as Americay, a mountain region referred to by the locals in Nicaragua. 
Of course, most new discoveries already had names given by their original inhabitants, but Europeans don't seem to care establishing their own names from their own cultures. Even what seem like the most simple or factual maps have political choices in them. And it, it tells a story about who made it, how they made it, why they made it, and what priorities they have. Road maps from the 1960s of Birmingham, Alabama look like any other map depicting churches, restaurants, and hotels. But if you look closely, I have never found one that has any of the black churches. Uh, they only have the white churches, and this is even after the bombing of 16th Baptist Church. So, very famous church, very famous event, not on any of these road maps. It's one thing to omit a church, but how does a mountain seem invisible? How does an island seemingly disappear? The island of Bermeja off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula is shown on maps for 400 years. But the island of Bermeja does not exist. How does someone miss a mountain or an island? By not looking that carefully and not, see, not seeing what they don't want to see, right? Are people making maps on assumptions or on things they heard or optical illusions in the ocean? Yeah, definitely. Cartographers aren't always the world travelers. They're making maps based on eyewitness accounts. They're choosing who to trust, they're choosing who not to trust, and sometimes they make the wrong choice. So, let's close this. The Smiths have been trusted map makers for 160 okay. years. And they said in this letter that they will charge by distance. And, this and they're trying the to preserve the stories for future generations. They're Elk Grove, Leiden, Schamburg, Wheeling. They hope to sell much of the archive. Northfield, North Shore, and Cicero. They realize some aren't worth much money, but still have value. Many different atlases, many different surveyors worked on them. But what if future generations want to learn about today? Digital maps can actually tell us where to turn and how to find our favorite coffee place. No one is pulling out a Rand McNally atlas. How do we save the story of today when all the maps are digital? It's a whole problem and an interesting part of my job. Like, I don't really know how to do it. and I, None of my colleagues really have great ideas about how to do that. You have to wonder if all this map technology is somehow numbing our natural instincts to calculate or explore. But evolution has shown that technology can simply free up mental space and give us more room to create the next great invention that propels us forward.